if you start from the bottom, of, it looks um, we're, we're traveling in an upward direction, but uh, it looks like we're noticing a absence of a substance in the in the middle, which you can obviously see. It appears that there's core compression in the um, in the upper cervical region. Good. Like, you know, again, like what's the differential diagnosis? If you go through your Vindicate, what would you say this is most likely caused by? So Vindicate would be, it would be other vascular. It could be an infection. Not congenital, not autoimmune. Um, D. Gosh, darn. I'm going with D. Degenerative. Degenerative disease. Degenerative um, core compression. Good. We would call this cervical spondylotic myelopathy. Okay, Cer cervical spondylosis. Um, cervical spondylotic myelopathy, got it. Yep. That's the compression that, of the cord itself instead of the nerves around the cord, which would be radiculopathy. Exactly. So this tends to be not, not necessarily painful. It can be painless. This, he, he, in fact, does have some radicular symptoms in his arm, but mainly this is a, the chief complaint is clumsiness of the hands, clumsiness of the legs, trouble with bowel and bladder, trouble walking. You and, said he has um, trouble with bowel and bladder? He does not. He, he does, does not, not. yeah. That would be the progression of the disease. And then, um, uh, you know, the natural history of this disease is that it will progressively worsen over time if we leave this alone. Usually not abruptly, usually it's more slowly, um, but, it, but it's definitely a progressive disease. So um, I threw this case up. You guys, Kiri did a great job and the lady did a great job. I threw this case up because I need some advice on it. Justin, you see this, uh, you see this guy? How would you handle this? I'm, I'm still trying to decide what to do with this patient. You know, if he's already showing clumsiness and some balance issues, he's clinically manifesting myelopathy. And, you know, you can argue if he has these changes on a, in an earlier basis, you know, before he's having any symptoms, you can talk to him about monitoring conservative care. But I think if you have the conversation with them and you explain the natural history and the, the stepwise deterioration where they'll, most people don't understand, but they'll, they'll be okay. <laughs> then they'll have a, a steep progression. And once you have a progression, it's not always going to come back if you do surgery. So I would be counseling him very strongly on surgery early. And his alignment actually looks relatively favorable to either an anterior approach or a posterior approach. Um, you could easily argue for a posterior laminectomy and fusion um, and just let the cord kind of float back, or you could approach it from the front. I'd, I'd want to have the, the axials and sagittal side by side to take a look, but definitely from C3 down to at least C5, probably C6 um, decompression. Would you go anterior or posterior on this gentleman? I tend to favor anterior, but I think probably because it's three levels and I'd probably go posterior for this one. Okay. Yeah, I'm still, that's my conundrum is, is, um, I think his most severe compression obviously is at C3-4. Yeah. And, and then the next one is C4-5. So do I just do a limited C3-4 and C4-5 ACDF and see how he does? Because you see that 5-6 and 6-7, it's, it's not as bad. Right. Although we know that it's probably going to get worse at those levels. Um, so, so one thing that could help you with that is a laminoplasty posteriorly where you prophylactically open them. And then you've addressed those levels without having to fuse a good disc in the front. So explain to the students what a, what a laminoplasty is. So essentially, it's a procedure from the posterior side from the back where you create a partial fracture through one side of the lamina and a complete fracture through the other side of the lamina. And you basically hinge open the door and you're essentially just raising the roof of the lamina so there's more room. You're, you're increasing the volume of space available for the spinal cord. Um, and it's a motion preserving procedure so that you're not fusing the patient. You hold the, you hold the lamina open any number of different techniques. Sometimes it's wire suture. There's a little plate or a piece of bone you can put as an interposition graft in between the lamina and the lateral mass. Um, and that's a, a pretty nice procedure that's commonly done in the Asian countries because they see a lot more of the OPLL ossification of the posterior ligament where they do a lot of, they have a lot more of myelopathy and, and stenosis. It's just in their, 
it's in their disease population than we see. So they favor that over there. And it's a very nice procedure for cases like this, where you want to decompress four levels without having to fuse two good levels. Good point. Dr. Malkin, Kira has a question. Kira, go ahead. You can ask. Okay. Um, so is cervical uh, spondylosis similar to degenerative disc disease? 